they just have no realistic prospect of owning their own home. And The home ownership rate now for people who are under 40 has dropped to only 25%. I'm here with Phil Twyford, Labour's housing spokesperson, and I would argue the most effective Labour MP this term. Phil, housing crisis, it's on the lips of everyone. Tell us what's going on. Well, it's pretty much become the defining political issue of the election, I think, Stu. Yeah. Um, uh, New Zealanders hate to see uh, you know, their children and their grandchildren uh, locked out of the kind of opportunities that they enjoyed. Um, mm. No one likes to see kids growing up in the back of a van. Mm. Uh, so it's become a, a real issue. And, uh, and I'm really pleased that I think Labor's got a solid reform agenda of things that we're going to do to fix the housing crisis and actually restore the Kiwi dream of affordable home ownership. And look, New Zealand's not exempt from all of the international uh, pressures that uh, are felt in places like Vancouver, Hong Kong, Sydney and Melbourne, mm. where um, large amounts of uh, foreign money sloshing around the globe mm. uh, looking for mm. um, real estate markets in countries like New Zealand to mm. invest in. So um, that's why one of the first things we'll do in government is to ban foreign buyers from buying existing homes. So if you're not a citizen or a permanent resident, you won't have the right to buy an existing home uh, under our policy. You can build a new one mm. and add to the supply. Fantastic. Mm. So this is about doing what's right for Kiwis. It is. It's about ensuring we get good high quality foreign mm. investment, not foreign investment that's just going to drive up house prices beyond the reach of awesome. New Zealanders. Because I know, you know, when you were young, you bought a house in Kingsland, I bought a small house in Mount Eden. The way things are sitting at the moment under this government, that's, that's a fable of the past, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is. So um, my son's generation in, yeah. in their late 20s in Auckland, and in, increasingly in other parts of the country too, mm. they just have no realistic prospect of owning their own home. And, mm. and when my wife and I bought our first home, it was approximately three times our household income. Yep. Well, the average now in, in Auckland is 11 times the, the, the average household income. Mm. The home ownership rate now for people who are under 40 has dropped to only 25%. You're kidding me. That's under 40. Mm. So we're not just talking about the young ones who are straight out of university. We're talking about young families. Yeah. People who have been working maybe 15, 20 years. Yeah, that's right. So most people now are typically, uh, not, the ones that can afford to buy are not mm. doing so until their, their mid to late 30s. Yeah. And uh, it takes now 50 years to pay off the typical mortgage. So people wouldn't be mortgage free until they're well into their 80s. This That's is, just how bad things have got. This is so not the Kiwi dream. This is probably the single biggest challenge facing the country. Yeah. And uh, Labor's offering a, a much bolder, I think, more innovative set of policies yeah. that are designed to fix this housing crisis. Well, let's make a, I think, a perfectly valid assumption. Um, on the Monday, the 26th of September, Labor government comes in, Phil Twyford, Minister of Housing. What would you look to do by Christmas time in order to really get this thing, uh, you know, really solve this problem? Mm. Or so, start addressing the problem? Sure. So one of the first things we'll do is we'll make uh, changes designed to, um, to ease the huge demand pressures that are responsible for driving prices up so high. So um, banning foreign buyers from buying existing homes, we'll just do that straight away. Yeah, awesome. We're going to close the tax loopholes that currently allow property investors to write off their losses against other uh, taxes that they have to pay on a job, on an yeah. income or uh, employment or a business. Yep. Last year that enabled property investors to um, to avoid $150 million in taxes. Wow. That's a, effectively a big public subsidy for property speculation. How many state houses can you build with $150 million? Well, uh, you know, let's say you could build um, 450 to 500 state houses wow. on existing land that we own. So you could do a lot with that and uh, that will and that, those things will ease the demand pressure. Mm. We'll also get cracking straight away with Kiwi Build, our promise to build 100,000 affordable homes for first home buyers. And we'll be partnering with the private sector uh, to build these homes, half of them in Auckland, but yeah. half around the rest of the country. Fantastic. And that's really going back to policies that um, previous governments did, actually both National and Labor, mm -hmm. to stimulate the building of um, high quality but modest starter homes for young families. 
Yeah, that's really uh, a big priority for us. And um, it's crazy that currently something between 40 and 50,000 kids mm -hmm. go to hospital every year with respiratory and infectious diseases. How many? 40 to 50,000. You're kidding me. Yeah. And every winter, about 1,600, mostly older New Zealanders, yeah. die premature deaths because of cold, damp homes and poverty. You know, I heard a figure that um, a kid who's diagnosed with rheumatic fever will end up costing the health system about a million dollars mm. over their life. And they'll probably end up dying at about 55, 60 anyway. Mm. So those 40 or 50,000 kids you talked about, is, is it pretty easy to sort of address this problem by just putting a heat pump in and insulating? That's right. You, you know, I mean, doctors and drugs can't solve these problems. Mm. It's about the environment. So we've got to ensure that, um, you know, most of the kids who are growing up below the poverty line, mm. they're in private rental housing yeah. and it's pretty poor quality. So mm. now these kids, when they get these um, lung infections and so on, often they end up with permanent lung damage Ugh. that shortens their lifespan and leaves them with a lifetime of um, vulnerability to chest infections and so on. So we're a better country than this totally. and we can fix it just by setting um, decent minimum standards mm. for insulation, for heating mm. and ventilation that will make homes warm and dry. You know, what does a heat pump cost these days? $1,500? Yeah, a couple of thousand maybe. So. so it's not too much to ask a landlord to actually spend a couple of thousand dollars and put a heat pump in, is it? That's right. And I think that, um, you know, you might spend, let's say, three to five thousand meeting the standards to put in a heat pump or two and some insulation. Yeah. But actually, a rental property, over the lifetime of that, the heating and the insulation, which may mm. be 15 to 20 years, mm. rental properties will generate hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of yeah. revenue. Yeah. So it's a pretty small expense. Absolutely. But, you know, it's, a, it's about doing the right thing mm. and doing the decent thing for our, our children and future generations. But since National's been in government, the cost of building has doubled. Yeah, okay. okay. Not the number of houses. So yeah. we're actually building fewer houses now than, than were being built in 2004 and under Helen Clark. And few of them were being built in 1974 when Norman Kirk was the Prime Minister. You're kidding me. No. So when you compare those numbers also to per head of population, when you think how much the population's grown, mm -hmm. we're actually performing very, very poorly. And in fact, there's a shortfall of about 60,000 homes yeah. that's built up while National's been in government. And that mm -hmm. shortage of housing is one of the things that's driving prices up. So have they really been asleep at the wheel? With this one, yeah, they have. I mean, they it, they it, they really took their eye off the ball. Mm. Uh, plenty of people, including um, uh, Labor, were telling them that there was a housing crisis yeah. emerging, and I think. John Key really thought that it was a good thing that house prices were becoming so expensive because yeah. it would make people feel wealthier. Yeah. And so National didn't really do anything. And yeah. um, they like to, they try to look as if they're doing something mm. while actually doing as little as possible. Because it's interesting, at the street corner meetings we hold, this is a big issue, but it's not just the, the young people that can't afford it or the dispossessed mm. that can't get in. You know, we hear from grandparents who are concerned yeah. about their grandkids. We hear about, uh, from parents who are concerned about their kids not getting in. Mm. So what you're saying is we actually have a plan to address their concerns, don't we? We do. We have their policies. And I think that there's a fantastic opportunity for reform now because there are so many New Zealanders who want change in this area. So mm. think of the half of or the, the whole population, a half the population rents. Mm. Right, they want change. Mm. Think of all the grandparents and the parents who hate mm. it that their kids will never have the opportunities that they did to yeah. own, their, own their own home. And so many Kiwis hate to see the squalor and the poverty, you know, mm. pensioners living out their days in suburban campgrounds. Terrible, right? Or people uh, who are so poor they won't turn the heater on in the middle of winter because mm. they don't have any insulation and yeah. they're living uh, in freezing cold houses mm. and flats. So uh, there's a big um, I think a big uh, coalition of New Zealanders who want change and our job is to get into the polling booth in September to change the government. Hey mate, I've heard you talk about uh, flipping where you know someone makes $300,000 without even living in the place, in fact owning it for about a day or two. Yeah. Well, what's this about? This is the kind of extreme end of the speculative real estate uh, market that we have in New Zealand at the moment. and. As you say, there are people who are flipping or selling on houses that they've just bought yeah. uh, and making massive windfall profits. So it's sometimes we're seeing um, five, six hundred thousand dollars profit of a house that's sold on the same day. 
And it's a feature of just a, um, an out of control uh, speculative market and people are making uh, oodles of money. Is it legal? Um, well, it is legal unless the real estate agent has been colluding with the person who's, <laughs> who's selling the house on to make yeah. a big profit. And there are one or two examples where that looks like it's been happening. And we've been pushing for uh, tougher rules yeah. to, to um, stop that kind of rogue behaviour. Mm. But the only way to really fix the problem mm. is by um, taking the capital gain out of the market yeah. so that these people don't, don't, aren't making these massive windfall profits. Government bought in this bright line test where if you sell a house that's not mm. your family home within two years, you've got to pay, pay a capital so pay a capital gain tax on that. Yep. Would we keep that in or would we strengthen that? We've said we'll, we'll push it out to five years. So five at the moment, years, yeah. um, the rule is that if you sell a rental property within two years of buying it, you pay income tax on the capital gain. And, right. and when that came in, I think you, re you remember the debate in the House, mm. Treasury said, so the mm. government's own advisors said, it's going to make very little difference because most speculators will hold on for two years and a day. Yeah. And that's what's happened. We're going to push that out to five years yep. um, in line with Treasury's advice because we mm -hmm. think that will make a big difference. It's interesting because you know I was on the select committee when we considered this and you know you go to Treasury because these are supposed to be the economic gurus. Why do you think the government didn't accept Treasury's advice? It's just another uh, case of the government wanting to look like it's doing something yeah. to take a bit of the pressure off, yeah. but actually they don't want to disturb mm -hmm. the huge profits that some people are making yeah. at the expense of others. I mean, yeah. who pays the who pays the price for these massive um, uh, windfall profits being made by speculators? Mm -hmm. It's young Kiwi first home buyers who yeah. can't get into their own home. Yeah. So. That's why, Stu, we're going to do. Um, we're going to ban foreign buyers. We're going to tax speculators. Yeah. Um, we're going to reduce immigration to take pressure, demand pressure off the market, while we can catch up with mm. building the infrastructure that's needed. Mm. Uh, and those things we think will make a big difference. On the other hand, we're going to build loads of high quality new homes for people to live in. Mate, you've got a whole lot of solutions. It sounds fantastic. But just, just one more question I've got. You talk about speculators. Have we got a feel for uh, you know the percentage of houses that are sold to speculators versus those that are sold to Kiwi families? There, there are, isn't any really reliable uh, data on that. Mm -hmm. So um, at the moment in the market, um, I think it's fair to say mm -hmm. most people who are buying and selling are buying, selling, buying and uh, selling just for the capital gain, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the definition of speculation. Yeah, absolutely. What we want is a stable market. Mm. where good landlords can get decent long-term returns yep. from renting out houses to, to tenants. Um, but under labour, you won't see these massive capital gains year mm. on year. And um, that might cause uh, some people a bit of disappointment. But for the good of the country and for our kids, mm. um, we've got to make housing more affordable. And we want our savings and our capital as a country to be invested in businesses that generate jobs and real prosperity for the nation. Amen to that. Hey, what are you seeing in Seattle at the moment? I'm seeing uh, in, in my electorate in West Auckland uh, lots of people, young um, first home buyers who just can't get into the market, they're shut yeah, out. Yeah. So enormous levels of frustration and disappointment. Yeah. People yeah. feel like things are just not working for them. It's hopeless. Mm. Um, rents are going up fast, so uh -huh. not, uh, that's eating up people's household income. Mm. It's really depressing people's quality of life mm. and their standard of living. Uh, and I'm also seeing, and this is really, really uh, upsetting, families, including families who are in paid employment, mm. effectively homeless. Kidding uh, me. We, you know, I've, I've uh, had people living in tents in other people's backyards, wow. whole families uh, squashed into uninsulated garages, uh, and that's pretty upsetting. I mean, no one wants to see that going on in our local community. We only need one or two things to go wrong. Mm. Uh, a family has to move out, they can't pay the mortgage, or they mm. can't pay the rent, or there's any number of things that happen in people's lives, mm. and they find themselves homeless. To an interesting story in Napier, and, and I know you've been there, so they pulled down about 130 units in Napier. House, this is housing in New Zealand. They said mm. they weren't earthquake up to earthquake standard which always struck me as a little strange they're all built of wood mm. uh, and in the Napier earthquake in 31 the buildings that fell down were well, not the wooden ones they stayed put mm. but anyway they built these five one bedroom Kaumarua flats they were very very nice actually and yeah. they said we're going to build a whole lot more mm. they haven't 
turned one side of earth there's a whole lot of green space in Rhinoi which is good for kids to kick a ball but I've seen it yeah, yeah I've you've seen, seen it you've mm, been there mm. you know what is going on here should should housing New Zealand actually live up to its promises and start building some houses in Napier here yeah the government's had a funny idea that they want to reduce the amount of state housing in the, in places like Napier and regions all around the country mm -hmm. and they've been effectively sh selling houses off Mm. and shifting the, the capital asset to mm. Auckland where you've got all the demands of population yeah, yeah. And growth. Mm. We don't think that's right, mm. really. Places like Napier and all over New Zealand need good state housing in their communities. Yeah. It's not okay to basically shift that asset to Auckland. Totally. And, and the answer is actually, instead of taking out $1.8 billion out of Housing New Zealand, which is what National's done wow. in dividends, um, taxes and interest payments, mm -hmm. that would have been enough to build 5,000 houses. So if they ran Housing New Zealand as a public service, like we will when we're in government, yeah. they can spend those surpluses on building extra state houses where mm -hmm. they're needed. So what you'd also say to these young guys is go and do a building apprenticeship, uh, become a sparky or a plumber, because this is going to be work until the day you retire. Look, you couldn't give any better advice than that. There's uh, decades of yeah. building work to be done in this country because we've accumulated such a deficit yeah. uh, and an in infrastructure and in housing. So, and under Labor, when we're building 100,000 Kiwi built homes for first home buyers and thousands of extra state houses, you know, we're going to train up thousands of apprentices for this work. That's awesome, mate. And Thanks, Stu. Love the solutions. Can't wait till the 26 when you're in there and start making it happen. Good. It's, it's, it's solid labour policy and we can be really proud of it. Yeah, it's, it's really inspirational and aspirational, which, which is what our party's about. So, congratulations, yeah. mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. Thanks Cheers. so much. Cheers.